Hey, good morning, everybody. It's Mike from Orderflows. I hope everyone's having a, a great, uh, a great day today. It's June 8th. It's uh, almost summer already. And, you know, people always say, you know, ah, oh, the summer doldrums in the market. Uh, there's not much going on. But, you know, it, in actuality, it's markets are active pretty much every day. And, you know, there's so many markets you have out there to choose from that, you know, as a, as a trader, you have you know, plenty of opportunities and don't sort of fall into this thing. It's summertime, you know, the, the markets are going to get quieted down and, you know, there's not going to give me any opportunities for making money and trading. There's always opportunities every day. You know, the market is open. There's always going to be opportunities. And what I'll be talking about today is mastering order flow and how you can improve your trading results, you know, with order flow. Okay. I mean, that's why we're all here because, you know, we want to become better traders and, you know, you never reach a plateau in your trading, right? You always want to keep improving yourself. You know, markets are dynamic. They're always, um, you know, evolving and, you know, same with, you know, sorts of analysis out there. there there's, there's new ways to approach the market. And today I'm going to talk about, you know, understanding market dynamics through order flow analysis how to use order flow to identify potential trading opportunities. I'll talk about strategies for managing risk using order flow data. You know, at the end of the day, you know, as a trader, you want to try and make as much money as possible and, you know, risk management, or as I like to call it, trade management is something that is going to be very useful with the order flow, right? The order flow allows you to, um, you know, let trades run longer. Everyone always says, you know, you got to let your winners run, cut your losers short, but they never really talk about how to let your winners run. And I'll be explaining how you could use order flow to help you let your trades that are in the money go further. Okay. So, uh, where am I here? <clears throat> Who I am. If you're new to one of my presentations, I'll just give you a quick brief background on myself. And my name is Michael Valtos. I started a company in around 2015. It's called orderflows.com. And what it is, it's an order flow based software and education uh, package. But prior to that, I had over 20 years of professional futures trading experience. Right? I started on the CME floor with Dean Witter. And I was on the floor for about two years on the Chicago Mercantile Exchange. And the electronic trading was just starting, it was in its infancy. And you know, the company I was working for said, you know, hey, we need some guys to uh, sit upstairs, you know, run the electronic trading uh, machines, you know, do the trading. And, you know, being a young guy in my 20s at the time, I'm like, hey, yeah, I'll, you know, I raised my hand. You know, nobody wanted to do it because at that time to trade electronically, it was outside of the floor session. So it was basically from, um, you know, 4 p.m. Chicago time until 8.15 in the morning. So you'd either be working in the evenings or the overnights. So I had the fortune of, of working the overnight session from about uh, 11 p.m. until 8.15 in the morning. And it was great because I saw the rev the evolution, rather, of electronic trading and how to understand the flow of orders coming in there on the machine, you know, basically from the very beginning. And after about uh, three years of that, I left. I joined another company, EDF Man, a big English trading company uh, in their Chicago office for about two years. After that, I joined Commerce Bank, the big German bank, um, where I, I specialized in Bunds, Bobble, Schatz, DAX, and uh, Euro stocks. And after that, I spent about four years with Cargill. Cargill is the big commodity trading company. Um, in the U.S., you know, they count for about 30% of grain exports and about 25% of meat exports, but they trade everything as well. You know, anything that grows or can be uh, taken out of the ground, they trade. And, you know, they sent me overseas to work. I worked in Singapore for a year. And then I joined J.P. Morgan in Singapore, where I spent uh, almost uh, almost you know, eight and a half, almost nine years as a vice president of futures trading on the trading desk, you know, not just sitting in a corner office looking at spreadsheets saying, oh, you know, his, his risk is too much. No, this is the actual trading desk. So, you know, it's through all these jobs and experiences. Now, you know, it's not a lot. It's only five years over I'm sorry, five companies over 20 years. So it's not like, you know, just jumping around or say, you know, trading for myself, you know, no, I, I traded professionally. I traded big size. And what I'll be talking about today 
is things that I learned over these years of electronic trading from the time when it first started, you know, up until the present time. And I've, I've experienced, you know, the market rallies, the market crashes, you know, the financial crash, um, you know, the long-term capital management, you know, the dot-com bubble. I, I've, I've been through all that. And, you know, it shapes about, uh, you know, my, my thinking and how I approach order flow. It's not just trading from, you know, COVID to now. No, you know, I've traded bull markets, bear markets, um, you know, and, and crashes. So as a professional former trader who's worked on the institutional trading desk for 20 years, I'm excited to share these experiences with you, right? These Strategies I'm going to talk about today, you know, help experienced traders identify trends in the market and capitalize on them. And if you're a beginner to order flow, right, it's a way to safely conduct your trading. Okay, I'm going to show you ways that you could simply read the market. That's going to help keep you in trades longer, right, and maybe help you cut losing trades shorter, right, because you know. It, that's essential for you know a trader to understand what's happening in the order flow in order to be more successful, right? Being successful isn't just about having good trades. You also got to recognize when trades are going against you and cut those, okay? So what's unique is I'm only one of a handful of former institutional traders who have mastered both trading order flow and teaching it to retail traders all over the world. Like I said, you know, I've been doing this for eight years. You know, I've been doing this since 2015. What are we? 2023 now? Yeah, that's that's eight years. And you know, it's it's a big difference when you are a institutional trader versus a retail trader, right? Everyone talks about the size, but you know, as retail traders, I'm in that retail trading category now because I I just trade for myself. And basically what we are reading, we're, we are reacting to what the big traders are doing. So we have to be aware and be able to understand what they're doing in the market and take advantage of it. Okay, so you know, before we dive in, just a, a brief disclaimer, right? Understand that trading involves risk, okay? And you shouldn't trade without risk capital, right? Don't think that, oh, you gotta pay your, your mortgage you know, at the end of the month and you got three weeks, so you're gonna start trading and, and make up the mortgage. You know, don't put yourself in that position. You're you're putting yourself at a disadvantage. You know, it's better to when you start trading, you know, trade with money that is not where where let me just put it this way, where money isn't going to be in the forefront of your mind, right? When you're trading, you know, that's the money is the afterthought, right? The money will come if once you're consistent and a good trader. So the first thing I'll talk about is understanding market dynamics through order flow analysis. <clears throat> so what is market dynamics? Well, it's basically the forces of the market constituents, the traders that are responsible for the shift in the demand and supply curve, and basically are accountable for creating or reducing the supply and demand of a particular product. Basically, market dynamics is supply and demand. You know, it, it sounds fancy, like, you know, this I took off of some um, website. You know, this is this is the academic description or definition of market dynamics. But at the end of the day, market dynamics is just the tug of war between supply and demand, which is going on between the buyers and sellers in the market. Now, when we talk about you know the trading that's taking place, okay, we just think in the basic sense of you know buyers and sellers, right? We don't we don't think about the types of buyers and sellers that are there in the market. But there's actually two forms of buyers and sellers, two forms of traders. Right? You have aggressive traders, you have passive traders, and this is an important distinction when you're looking at a market, especially when you're looking at order flow, because you want to know, you know, are the aggressive traders, you know, very active, or are the passive traders also, you know, taking control of the market in a way? I mean, they're passive; you don't necessarily think of them taking control, but really, what you see is them absorbing, right? The passive traders will absorb, and the difference is, aggressive traders are the ones who pay market price or sell at the market. Okay, they are, that's why they're aggressive, right? And passive traders are the orders that are sitting in the order book that the aggressive traders trade against. And, you know, while it sounds 
fancy uh, big words, aggressive traders, passive traders, really think of it in simple everyday terms. Okay, if you're if you are looking to buy a house and you have have to buy it, like, and you're willing to pay market price or above market price, you would be the aggressive buyer. If you own the house and you want to sell it, and you want to sell it, you know, maybe you want to sell for a million, but you think I can get a million one, you list it at a million one, and you just wait for someone that's going to come along and pay a million one, you would be the passive seller. Now, if you're a motivated seller, I mean, I got to get rid of this house, you know, my for whatever reason, you know, my business is failing, I got to sell my house to cover expenses, and someone comes in and says, you know, I'll buy your house, but I'll pay 900000 for it. <laughs> now that buyer, he's the passive buyer, and if you're going to sell it to him at 900000 you're going to be the aggressive trader, you're going to be the aggressive seller, because now you're selling your house at a price that's the current bid. Essentially, you're selling at the market. Sorry. Now, once you're able to distinguish between aggressive traders and passive traders, you're going to get information in the order flow. And there's three building blocks of order flow that, in my opinion, you know, all the information that you need, sort of not all of it, but majority is, originates from. It's delta, it's point of control, and it's imbalances. Now, delta is simply the difference between the aggressive buyers and the aggressive sellers in a bar. Now, you could have cumulative delta, which is, you know, for the day. Um, you know, you could have delta for a time period. But generally, when we talk about delta, we're talking about, you know, a specific bar, right? Because we look at, you know, price charts that are broken down by either time or by volume or ticks or, you know, however you break down your bar. So, each bar will have a delta. It's either going to be positive, meaning aggressive buyers were in control, or it'll be negative, meaning aggressive sellers were in control. Once in a while, the delta will be at zero. Not once in a while, but very rare. But it does happen, and it's more of coincidence when that happens because, you know, it could easily be minus one or plus five. It's just that it happened to land at zero. So I, I don't read too much into it if it's exactly at zero, meaning buyers and sellers aggressive buyers, aggressive sellers were evenly matched, but um, you said it's just more of coincidence if it lands on zero, okay? But I'm gonna talk about Delta uh, shortly. Now, point of control, all right, point of control, every bar has a point of control. Now, if you're familiar with market profile, volume profile, point of control should be something you're familiar with, you know, which is the price level for the day where the most volume traded. But you can actually break it down by by bar so if you're looking at a one minute bar chart each bar right is going to have volume distributed within that bar and that price level that has the most volume is the point of control if you're looking at a, a you know a 5000 volume bar there's going to be a price level in that bar where the most volume transacts that's going to be your point of control so it doesn't matter you know whether you're looking at a time based chart a tick based chart a volume based chart etc because within that bar just as within a day of a volume profile, volume is going to be distributed, okay? And it's just simply the price level with the most volume traded on both the bid and the offer. <clears throat> now, the third point is imbalances, okay? And imbalances in the order flow is when you have more aggressive buying than selling by a certain percentage, right? Four to one is just sort of the industry standard. Some people use three to one, some use, you know, five to one, but sort of the, the for me, I use four to one. That is, you know, it, it's just, it's, it's a nice level because you know that one side is dominating the other. So an aggressive, a buying imbalance is when you have more aggressive buyers than aggressive sellers. A selling imbalance is the opposite. When you have more aggressive sellers than aggressive buyers by four to one. So from these three delta point of control and imbalances, <coughs> excuse me, you're going to be able to get a lot of information that you can make trading decisions off of. And if you're looking at a normal bar chart, okay, you're going to see there's areas like here. I've, I've highlighted two areas where you see the market, you know, reversed. And if you're looking at these areas, 
on a bar chart, they're they're kind of nondescript. You don't understand why a market turned at one level and, and sold off to a level, then rallied up from it. But when you understand the order flow, you will understand why the market stopped there. Okay. And this right here is that first circle right up here. Okay. You see how the market was going up? It sort of stalled up here, and then it sold off, and it was a nice sell off of over 10 points. And it happened, you know, within about uh, 20 to 30 minutes. And the easiest clue that you would get is simply by watching the order flow. Okay, so what's happening, right? The market was going up, right? Remember on the bar chart, right? Market was going up nice and sharp, nice rise, and then it sort of stalled, and then it sold off. Well, what was the signs? Well, as you're going up, making these highs up here, right? You sort of yeah, you, know, you got the one big green bar, right? Which is what you expect to see as the market's going up. Nice big positive delta, big green bar. Then you go a little bit higher and the aggressive selling starts coming in. You can see you got the negative delta. Okay, that's a sign. It's your first sign of some weakness in the market. And then the next bar, a nice green bar up again, matches you know the same high of the bar it's got positive delta 300 okay that's what you like to see so you know maybe there's something more to this move that's still going on and then it comes up here makes a slightly new high by about a point still got positive delta but it's getting lesser okay so you're going up here making a new high making a new high but as you're doing it the volume is i'm sorry the delta is getting weaker right it made this first high with negative delta so it's telling you aggressive selling came in and then it sort of paired up that high. And then the next high here, it's got weaker delta, right? It had positive 322, and then it's down to only 233. And then it can't even go any higher. It gets within a tick of the high, and it's got a small positive delta, <laughs> okay? But then the next bar is a red candle down, and it's got a negative delta. So let's think about it. Right? Let's take a step back and take a look here. So. We're going up, right? Nice aggressive buying, right? Just by watching the delta. Go up here, negative delta. So signs sellers are coming in. And then, I mean, that's your first sign. Maybe people were taking some profit, you know, hitting the bid, just getting out, taking their profit up here because we just had a nice little rally. And then we start going, trying to go higher. But as we're going higher, the aggressive buying you can see is getting weaker. 322 is the aggressive the amount of aggressive buyers make the new high 233 then the next bar can't even make a new high and it's got a very small delta of positive 11. so it's just telling you that there's more there's only 11 more aggressive buyers than sellers in that bar and then the next bar a big strong negative delta 373. so you know if you're looking at this bar chart you can't necessarily tell that buying is getting weaker as you're going up but by watching the order flow simply looking at the delta you can see that right because you know i mean it, it's simple just looking at the amount of aggressive buying that's taking place or in this case the amount of aggressive buying that is weakening what do you think is going to happen if there's no more aggressive buyers well if there's no more aggressive buyers who's there to take the market higher well no one right and then the market sells off Okay, then it gets down here. Okay, this is around 11, the same day. All right, let's go back here. All right, we rallied, then we sold off to this area. All right, then we bounced back up again. Okay, well, what's what's happening down? What's happening down there? As you're coming down, you know, nice aggressive selling, negative deltas here, you know, minus 589, minus 964, minus you know, 490, it bounces up a little bit, then comes down here, minus 554, minus 670, minus 785, minus 93, minus 21, and then plus 650. <clears throat> so it's coming down here, nice strong sellers, minus 589, minus 964, minus 500, minus 600, minus 700, then only minus 90, minus 21, okay. Where's my where's my sellers? They're not there anymore. They've sold everything that they need to sell for now. Okay, then you see the aggressive buyers coming in here with the strong positive delta, and the market starts to rally again. 
So that's you know a simple way to use Delta to clue you in on what's happening with you know the intensity of buying or selling that's taking place in the market, right? Because at the end of the day, you know, for a move to continue, you need buyers for the move to continue up. You need aggressive sellers for the move to continue down. And if they're not there, that move's not going to continue. <clears throat> okay. You know, here, market drives down, and then it reverses back up, right? Comes back up to the previous high from where we had just sold off of. And it's one of these things where you get that big, sharp move down, very quick move down, and then quick move up. You know, people that are, you know, they see this move start to happen, everyone's getting short, but then you had a very sharp reversal here. Well, if you're looking at the order flow, you can see how it just shifts on you very quickly. Okay, market's coming down, right? The red bar, the red bar, then you had this green bar. Well, what's happening? Okay, you got strong negative delta, minus 1100. Another bar, strong negative delta, minus 1100. And you get down here, you got aggressive selling, right? You can see the 476, the red numbers within the bar are is how you determine the imbalances. So if it's red, you could see in the two-way auction, it's a selling imbalance, or if it's blue, it's a buying imbalance, okay? <clears throat> and so you see this the aggressive selling taking place, the strong negative deltas. Even down here, you see more aggressive selling, selling imbalance, selling imbalance, and then the market reverses. The aggressive buying just sort of comes in here almost out of nowhere with one buying imbalance, two, three, four, even within the next bar, one, two, three buying imbalances. And you can see how the delta shifted actually from a, a strong negative to a strong positive within this bar. If you're looking at the max delta and the min delta, these are market internal delta readings. So I can see at one point this green candle that's up, that's got a positive delta of 400, actually had a negative delta of minus 471. So early in this bar, obviously it was red. It was a red candle down. You see the selling imbalances in here. And a nice strong negative delta forming, minus 471. Then it reversed. The aggressive buying came in. That's how you can tell, you know, that's a clear sign of, a, of uh, you know, aggressive trading is imbalances. And then the delta turns positive. So it went from minus 400 back to zero, which is a swing of 400. And it finished at 400, so it's actually a swing of 800 in the delta, right? So you know that's that's an important reading because it's it's one thing to just have a delta of, of 400, but you went from a strong negative to a strong positive, right? And then you couple that in with the buying imbalances. I mean, the four buying imbalances in there, and you know the aggressive traders were strong. Okay, here's another one that you know. You can see this move, right? It's going up, 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 up. Okay. You, people say, well, you have some selling imbalances. Is, isn't that, you know, bearish? Well, here on this move up at the top of this bar, actually, what you have is strong bids coming in to support the market going up. It reaches its pinnacle up here. And what do you see? You start seeing a lot of aggressive selling as the market starts appearing, to, starts to sell off, right? You got one, two, three, four, five imbalances in this bar, two here, another uh, seven, eight in this bar. So you can see the aggressive traders coming in. Obviously you've got negative delta, which is what you like to see. You're gonna see negative delta with imbalances. But the most obvious one is as we are selling off, you're looking for bars that have multiple selling imbalances, you know, more than three that you know, spread out in the bar. It's just telling you people are coming in, they're coming in out of the woodwork as we made these new highs, you know, swing highs or, or highs of the day, doesn't matter. But when a market reaches a certain level, you know, you wanna see it attract other traders coming in. And here you can see it's attracting other traders. In this case, it's attracting aggressive sellers. It's attracting sellers to the market. So if I know that there's sellers in the market, yeah, to me, I know this market's going to sell off, okay? Now, again, they'll just sort of talk about these selling imbalances on the way up. This is actually liquidity, which I'll talk about coming, you know, a little bit later, is the market that's getting bid up, 
right? When you have, you know, the green candles with selling imbalances, that's actually a bullish sign. When you have red candle with selling imbalances, that's bearish. Okay, read between the lines. You know, this is a famous saying. <laughs> um, I, I won't get into the origin of it, but what's happening here, right? You see this market sort of going up, getting weaker, and then it has a nice move down, right? And, you know, breakout traders, you know, people that follow price action will say, oh, yeah, you broke this low down here, and then you sold off. Well, if you're looking at the order flow, you could have gotten short, you know, five, three or four points higher than down here rather than getting short at the breakout of this you know this this low down here at 42.79 and a half if you're reading the order flow you know you could have been getting short around 43.80 42.82 and a half why just by watching the order flow you're sort of coming up here to the swing high and you're seeing you know positive delta 300 okay and then minus nine positive delta of 106, so you went from 300 to 106, okay, then a small negative delta of minus 43. And then up here, right at this swing high here, it's got a delta of one, okay? So look at just the positive deltas, 316, 106, one, right? Read between the lines. Even though it's putting in positive deltas, it's really dropping off precipitously, right? It's not going higher with stronger deltas. It's going higher on very weak positive deltas. And then mixed in is obviously negative deltas. And then what happens? You could just see that in here. You could be getting short 42.82, 42.82 half, rather than waiting for the market to break down and getting short at, you know, 42.79, 42.78 because this is, you know, this is the profit that you want to take. Yeah, it's nice to get this move, but you could be getting in much earlier on a trade rather than later by simply reading what's happening in the order flow. Now, point of control, right? It's the price level in the bar with the most volume. And again, if you're looking at a simple bar chart, you can't see where the volume is, right? If I'm looking at this candlestick chart, I don't know where the volume is anywhere here you know people have ways of trying to say well there's an imbalance or something you know fair value gaps etc you know that's you you know you're just guessing right when you use those terms because you're not looking at the actual volume that's why you know order flow is is so important because it tells you where things are trading and the intensity of the trading the strength or the lack of strength it's not just about looking at where volume occurs. You also want to be looking at where lack of volume occurs. So on an order flow chart, you're going to see a price level in a bar, bar. That's this gray area in each bar where the most volume is. And there's certain point of controls that matter that have importance. You know, Every bar is going to have a point of control, but it doesn't necessarily mean anything. Most bars, it's going to be in the middle. Right, and when the point of control is in the middle of the bar, that's your normal distribution. What you as a trader want to do is take advantage of the abnormal distribution, right? If you're looking in here, you can see how the market sort of came down, bounced up, came down, bounced up, and then sold off. Okay, why? Because the volume is starting to be distributed at the edge of the bar. It's telling you that there's sellers coming in at the high of the bar so what's happened is you know it sort of came down here went back up came down looks like it's about to rally and then at the top of this bar all the volume or not all the volume the majority of the volume is taking place there so it's telling me that buyers are coming in you know as this market is starting to drop down they're coming in at these levels saying hey you know this we think that this price is good sell right and then they've got volume to sort of absorb whatever aggressive buying is going to take place and sell it up here because they're anticipating lower prices. And just really quick, you know, if there was one way, people ask me, you know, what's the simplest way to trade order flow? I just say, you know, trade the point of controls that are on the extreme of bars. And what that means is on a red candle at the top price level, 
or on a green candle at the very bottom price level. I said, if, the, if you just want one way to start trading order flow, just look for those and trade around them, okay? okay? Because you can see here, right, this market was going up, pulls back, <clears throat> volume steps in down here on this pullback. You know, people always talk about buying the dip. Those are the dips you wanna buy when there's strong buyers coming in. You know, to sort of arrest the move down. You don't want to be buying a dip and the market keeps dipping. You want to buy a dip where it stops at and then starts rallying, right? And if you're looking at point of control, again, on a bar chart, you don't see where it is. It's impossible to see it on a normal bar chart. You need order flow because, you know, this was a couple of days ago in the gold, right? It was on the order flow. There's a great reason to buy this pullback right here, you know, before it rallied up. But if you're looking on a simple bar chart, you're not gonna see it. And it's gonna give you the better entry rather than buying up here or even buying up here. It's gonna give you this nice entry to hold it. Whoops. That is this chart right here. That's this bar right here, this point of control on the extreme, right? I know there's strong volume coming in here to stop whatever move is taking place. I can get long in the next bar right in somewhere in here or even within the next couple of bars, you can see it takes, basically, it doesn't even test that level, right? That's right here. You'd be getting long here, or here, or here, rather than somewhere over here. And again, you're not taking any, pretty much any heat on this trade. It, it you know, you're not going down into drawdown at all. And then you get that big move up. <clears throat> now keep it in context. Right, just because you have a point of control, you know, don't run out and say, oh, I got to trade every single um, green bar that has a point of control on the bottom or sell every single red bar that has a point of control on the top. Take it in context, right? You want to do it on a pullback rather than, you know, after you have a big move and then you get the, the volume appearing at the bottom, right? That's not what you want to do after a move up. You'd be looking for a reason to sell, right? You'd be looking for the red candle with a point of control somewhere near the top, not a green bar at a high with a point of control on the bottom. Okay, so oh, let's move on to the next part. How to use order flow to identify potential trading opportunities. <clears throat> so let's look at the market, right? I showed you this chart again, so it's cheating, but you know, where is the trade, right? Is it here on the breakout? No, it's here on the order flow, right? You can see as we're going up, the order flow is weakening. 316, 106, one in the positive deltas, and he's still got the negative deltas. Even if you're looking at the negative deltas, it went from minus nine, minus 43, minus 251. So not only do you have the positive deltas increasing, or sorry, decreasing from three, 316 to 106 to one, you have the negative deltas increasing from minus nine, minus 43, minus 251. So you don't have to wait till the market breaks down over here to get short. You can just get short in here. And where's your risk? It's just right above this swing high. Getting short down here, your stop is still the same price. But this, in this case, you're getting in much closer, much earlier to your stop price. <clears throat> okay. Here's another great example, right? You see this market is just sort of going sideways in here. But look at this little collection of bars that we have right in here, right? As this market is going sideways, we've got strong aggressive selling, strong negative deltas, minus 625, minus 637, minus 661, then minus 21, but strong selling, strong selling, strong selling, strong selling. The market's not going down. So what, what's that telling you, right? You, you gotta read and understand you know, the order flow is, okay, I've got strong selling in the market. Market's not going down. Maybe it's a sign of absorption. People are coming in to absorb that aggressive selling. And then what happens? Rather than get short saying, oh, there's all this aggressive selling, I got to get short. You see the negative deltas, I got to get short. Well, if you do, the market rallied. But by reading it, by understanding that, you know, I got strong aggressive selling taking place, but the market's not going down, okay maybe someone's absorbing it, right? You gotta be able to make that distinction. So you get rewarded to say, oh, uh, there's absorption going on down here. I could join that absorption. I could try and get long at these lower levels. 
Because if that absorption holds, the market's going to go up. And what's your risk? It's just below that level of absorption. That is how supply and demand works, right? You want to be buying, you know, when there's, uh, say, demand in the market. You know, think of it rather than supply and demand. i sorry, I should use the words uh, support and resistance, right? Right? Because, you know, sometimes people confuse support and resistance with supply and demand. They use it interchangeably. But in this case, you're buying at support. And then eventually, you know, you'd, you would sell at resistance, right? Being able to identify support is through absorption. <clears throat> okay, here's a nice chart, right? This is gold, right? Gold is, is, a, is a wonderful market for trading. You get nice price movements. Again, you can see it here, right? You're just watching what's happening as the market's coming up. Positive delta, positive delta gets small. It's 185, 150, then just 19. Then it turns negative at your swing high, minus 38, minus 141, minus 63. And on the way up, you got the aggressive buying, right, with the imbalances in the bars. Then it sort of it turns up here on the red candle. Point of control is matched, you know, as you're going higher, points of controls are also moving higher, which is what you like to see because, you know, if a market is moving up, you want to see volume also trading higher, looking for more volume to trade. That That's a sign of a, of a healthy move up. And then as the market goes down, you're seeing the aggressive selling come in with the imbalances and you're starting to see the point of controls go lower, 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 lower. Right, because now sellers are looking for areas that they can sell more and more volume at, you know, at, at lower. Uh, they're not looking to sell at lower prices, but as the market is going down, they have to start selling at lower prices, and they're going to start getting a bit aggressive, and that's how you see um, in the selling imbalances. Okay, now one of the things that really, in my opinion, make, makes order flow so special is you can see where the liquidity is. And you know, liquidity is basically the passive buyers and the passive sellers. You know, most traders don't even think about what the passive buyers or passive sellers are doing. And, you know, we had this big sell-off in the gold yesterday, right? 20 point, you know, 30, almost 30 point move down. And, you know, while it's nice to have a reason to sell up here, you know, if you have any reason to be selling on this move down, that's great. And by looking at liquidity, looking at where the passive sellers are coming in, and what is a passive seller? It's, it's somebody with supply, um, you know, supply in the market coming in to offer it out. They're trying to sell it. They're trying to get rid of it. They don't want to just come in and hit the bid and help move the market lower. They're going to help offer resistance in the market. Okay. And this here is it was a very clear sign. This little circled area was a very clear sign of liquidity coming into the market, right? And let's take a, a closer look. Now, you know, again, on this move down, right, people that trade price action, oh, you got a bullish pin bar here. Oh, you got another one right here. I got to be getting long. You buy this one, stop out. You buy this one, stop out, right? Pin bars are supposed to, you know, even some, you know, one up here, right? Everyone's going to say, oh, you got a bullish pin bar. You got you to buy those. Well, this is where using order flow is going to help you because if you buy those, watching what's happening in the order flow will tell you, hey, you know, I, I got to get out of this trade rather than let it stop me out. And again, you know, candlesticks are nice. I like, I, I look at candlesticks, but I understand that, you know, candlestick patterns don't always work. <clears throat> you know, maybe you get, you know, there's been studies done over the years. You know, some candlesticks have, you know, 68% chance or, you know, 47% chance. But when you start adding it with order flow, it's going to really, one, keep you out of bad trades or two, get you out of losing trades a lot sooner. At the end of the day, it's going to help you as a trader. That's how you cut your losses by looking at what's happening in the order flow. And I could see it right here, right? So this market was coming down, bounced up, starts going down. And I could see the liquidity coming in here, 177 contracts. And then in this red candle, 105, it's coming in on the offer. Now these are areas that the market had just been trading at. 
you know, just a few minutes before, in this case, you know, 30 seconds before. So if I know the market's coming down, bounces up, I got someone came in here and offered out, you know, 177 contracts. You know, even though somebody bought it, market did go back up. Okay. Next thing I know, we're trading below it. And then this one here, right? As this market starts going lower, I can see there was a big seller here, 105 contracts. And on the bar chart, you know, it's just right there as this market is starting to go lower. So if I know that there's liquidity coming in here on the sell side, I don't want to be long. I'd rather be short than anything, you know, rather than cover my position and, and sit on the sidelines. I'd, I'd be looking to sell the heck out of this to catch the rest of that move down because now I know there's a big seller coming into the market. It's time for me too to also get short. That's how you can trade liquidity, right? You don't necessarily need a heat map or a book map. You know, people like to use those now and there's nothing wrong with it. It's a tool at the end of the day. And, you know, but if you're looking at order flow, you can see things like that taking place because, you know, really what you want to be looking at is the actual trades that take place, not necessarily orders coming in, right? Oh, you know, because you're going to see as the market sells off, there'll be bids below offers above. What you want to see is where that's trading at. You know, is it trading right now? Because you're trading in the now. You're not trading in the future. Now, strategies for managing risk using order flow data, right? And I explained that earlier, right? Think of it as, you know, not necessarily managing risk, but managing your trade. You know, you want to be able to cut your losers short, let your winners run. That's the whole point of trading, right? Risk management. That's how you're going to maximize your profits and limit your losses. And you can see here just by watching the order flow again. It's it's not it's not rocket science, right? You see the market coming up here, topping. What's happening in the deltas? What's happening in the imbalances, right? You can see, okay, yeah, positive delta market goes up, right? Aggressive buyers, and then it just sort of spins its top right here. You know, you've got you know positive delta, then you start seeing the the aggressive selling coming in with the negative deltas, right? Because remember. Right, everyone, you know, Jim Dalton talks about price being an advertising mechanism. So think about it, right? Market had been going up. It rallied about 10 points pretty quickly. Now it's at these new higher levels. People are reacting. They're saying, hey, you know what? This is a great place to sell. And they come in, they start selling. Right? And you can see it happening in the order flow. The negative deltas are getting stronger, right? Right off the high here, minus 117, then minus 300. Minus 500 points of controls are going lower, and then the market starts to sell off. Right, so this says a sign of a market bottoming. It's sort of the opposite effect, right? Because market is selling off, you got the strong negative deltas, minus 500, minus 900, you know, minus 400, and then again, minus 600, minus 700, then just minus 93, minus 21. Okay. Where's my aggressive sellers? They're gone. This is the type of action that you see daily. You know, when markets are bottoming, either, you know, it could be swing bottoms or markets are making highs or highs of the day or, or swing highs, the topping act activity and the bottoming activity. Now, that doesn't mean every single top or bottom is going to look exactly like this. But when you see that in the market, that's your sign to take advantage of that trade. Or if you're in a trade, if you're short and you see this activity taking place in the market, rather than wait for the market to start rallying back up and then you, know, you start moving your stop down, you know, your take profit, you know, because you're, you're not going to hit your take profit. If you, you know, if you're short from 42.90 and you got to take profit at 42.75, which is just below this low, and you start seeing this activity take place, chances are we're not going to go to your take profit so what do you got to do right you have a take profit in the market you have a stop most people start moving their stop down okay then eventually get stopped on this bounce but if you're seeing this activity take place well you could move your your take profit from you know 75 you know maybe you're going to move it up to 76 76 and a half 77 rather than chase it back up here and then eventually it you know you're short from 90 and then your your stop you, know, you move it down to 82, you, so you, you make eight 
points of profit because you never hit your take profit. You, know, you still had a profit of, of eight points, but where would you rather be getting out? At 82 or at 78, right? Well, you're, that's an extra four points you're leaving on the table. If you're just like, well, okay, well, you know, my, my, my stop for my profit is, you know, it's going to get me out at 82. I'm happy with that. Well, I'd be much happier adjusting my take profit up to, you know, a more reasonable level, you know, because, you know, even if, even if it's at 79, you move your take profit from 75 up to 79 as it starts coming back up because you read what was happening in the order flow rather than moving your, you know, your stop down to get out, you know, up over here at 82, that's three points. Three points in the S&Ps is $150. And again, you know, you're short. This is gold. Again, this is that gold move yesterday. You know, I put this chart in here because it's easy to see, right? Everyone always has this plan. Well, yeah, I'm going to either get long or get short. But say you're short in this move, right? And you read what's happening in the order flow. Some people would, would get out here. Then if they get out here, they miss the rest of this move down because even though you have a little bit of buying going on, because you know, you don't know it when it's you know at 1020, you don't know if this market's going to go up or get or keep going down right or maybe you don't know maybe you want to get longer you want to get short what do you do well you would stay short right because even though this market is bouncing up you can see the, the strong selling coming in right that's why i talked about the intensity that's why looking at volume is going to help you because you can see it's not just aggressive selling coming in it's quite strong it's minus 141 right it's minus 63 right it's not you know minus 12 in the delta it's quite strong people are coming in here and just whacking all the bids the, the aggressive sellers are strong and, and knowing that information if you were whoops go back here if you are short you can stay short right if you got long in here you got to get out maybe even get short okay so that, that's how order flow is going to help you okay here this one is a little bit more difficult because you don't know yet right what are you going to do Okay, maybe you're long from here. What if you were long already? You know, in here, market was going up and it comes back down to your your break-even point. Well, do you, do you stay in the trade? You know, is it going to go up? Is it going to go down? You don't know. Or is it going to go sideways? All right? Or maybe you're getting short already from you know up here. The market starts coming down. Then it's just going sideways. What do you do? Well, you got to read the order flow. In this case, it continued down. And what were the signs? Now, this is a little bit nuanced, okay? But you still have strong aggressive selling. Now, people are gonna say, well, you have aggressive buying, these blue numbers in here, blue, 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 okay? Well, yeah, you have aggressive buying. Market's not going any higher. It's being absorbed by passive sellers. What are passive sellers? I talked about that earlier. Passive sellers are is traders that have supply they're trying to sell. So if I know there's sellers that have supply that they're trying to sell, I want to be on their side. I don't want to be fighting them. You know, if, if someone's got a lot of supply to sell, well, I'm not going to buy it all. I'm just, you know, trading a couple contracts. I can't, I don't have enough to beat them. They're going to beat me. And they did, right? That's what happened, right? Boom, the bottom fell, the rug got pulled and the market dropped, you know, another 10 points, you know, rather quickly. Okay. And again, it's about helping you manage the trade. This is crude oil, all right? And again, you can see, right? Market went up, it starts coming down, right? You wanna catch as much as the move as possible. And when you start to put it all together, it's gonna to help keep you in the trade, right? This market is moving down. What do you see? Clear sign in the bar, looking at the point of controls. Every point of control is pretty much lower than the previous one. So you know volume is migrating lower. As volume goes lower, price also goes lower. So it's not just price going down, you know, because price could go down on light volume. It doesn't mean anything. But if price goes down and the volume is going down, meaning more and more traders are transacting at lower prices, probably it's going to keep going down. Okay, then you have the selling imbalances on the way down. You can see two here, one, 
one, one, two, you know, one, another two. So you can say, okay, not only do I have volume migrating lower, but I have aggressive selling coming into the market. And then obviously, deltas are all red, right? Red, red, real red across the whole board. So that's how it's going to help you manage the trade. You know, in this case, everything was all together. All the signs were there. Sometimes it's going to be two pieces. It could be delta and point of control, or it could be delta and imbalances, or sometimes it could be point of control and imbalances. You could use you know, any part of the information that's available to you. And the beauty is with order flow, it's all available to all of us. The information is there. You just need a program to put it into an easy to read format such as this. You know, this is what we call the order flow footprint chart. So over the last 45, 50 minutes, you know, we've covered a lot of ground. And hopefully you, now you know some of the ins and outs of order flow and how to make smarter trading decisions. But unfortunately, I can't cover everything in, in a quick training session like this. You know, there's so much more to learn about order flow trading. But I hope you, that you now have a good understanding of order flow basics, right? You can do it. It's not as complicated, you know, it's not some mythical thing, you know, sometimes traders, yeah, I, I see these guys out there, you know, on, on social media, et cetera, you know, they, they come up with these fancy names and these tools, and it's just really basically a way, you know, you really, it's just simple, right? Trading is reading what's happening in the market right now, right? Don't, don't think that it's something... Um, you, know, you got to spend years and years learning, right? You, you, you can learn this stuff pretty quick as long as you put your mind to it. So remember, you know, trading can be daunting for many, but with the right set of knowledge and strategies, you're going to learn how to trade with order flow. And when you join orderflows.com, I'll share with you my most valuable trading experiences to guide you and make sure that your efforts are, are rewarded, right? Because, you know, you're putting in time and energy into learning order flow i want to give you guys you know the leg up so to speak so i got something special for you it's, it's my order flows trader software now it runs on ninja trader and ideally it's for futures traders if you're interested go to orderflows.com slash oft 6 at html it's my software it's my signature software that i've developed in in 2015 and we're eight years into it and we've got a lot of tools i've even talked about any of the tools here i've got about 17 or 18 indicators hard-coded into that software to help you analyze the order flow. And I have obviously video instructions on how you can, you know, what they all mean. And I, I will get into something in a second. But if you're interested in the software, go to orderflows.com slash off six. There's no monthly recurring payments or any other payments in the future. Of course, you'll have to pay for your data fees and ninja trader fees. But really what the software does, it's like Plugging a cord and you know, now that I saw was it yesterday or two days ago, Apple released that new goggle thing, um, you know, to surf the internet and do all sorts of stuff. But really what this order flows trader software does, it's like plugging into my brain the analysis that I normally do, you can see on your chart in a in a way because it's gonna be highlighted on your chart, you know, either market exhaustion or market weakness, or you know, which point of controls matter or where value is, things like that. So if you've ever felt like you're struggling to understand something only to have it click into place and suddenly become easy, that's what I really want to make the trading experience for you like. That's the power of understanding how something works. Once you understand the underlying principles of anything, life becomes so much easier. And take trading, for example. If you don't understand how the markets work, what makes the markets move, it's going to be very confusing and frustrating. Now, the big mistake traders make is thinking that just having the right software is all they need to be successful. They think, well, here I see a software out there and it's selling for $5,000. I've got to buy that and I'll become successful. No, right? That, that's as far away from the truth as possible because if you don't know how to use the software, it's not going to do you any good. That's why I focus on providing education on how to trade with order flow because I want you not only to you know, have software that helps you, but understand how to use it, right? Once you have a solid foundation, then you can begin trading with confidence. And that's where the real success starts to happen. You know, we've all bought software and we thought it's going to change our life. We thought, oh, this is it. This is all I need. And then we tried it. We put it on our computer. We can't get it, 
you know, we can't understand what we're looking at, how to use it. And that's really what I, I do with my software is I, I want you to understand how to use it. That's why I give you extra education, right? If you get my software today, you get access to my order flow trading course, which normally sells for $297. Oh, you're going to get it for free oh, included in your package. It's the order flows trading course. It's a 15 hours of video instruction. This is the, the original course on trading order flow that many people have copied. And not only that, you're also going to get access to my Order Flow's Inner Circle video series, which consists of 56 videos on advanced order flow uh, tips and analysis, forms of, you know, I say tricks, but really, you know, the nuances of order flow. And really, the only way to get access to the Order Flow Inner Circle video series collection is through this offer. You can't buy it anywhere. And if you add up the price of the software of $8.99, the training for $2.97, the Inner Circle video series of 497, it comes out to 1693, but you're not gonna pay that, okay? You're gonna get a much lower price. I got a better, much better special deal. Now, it's one thing to learn from videos and books. You know, we've all watched YouTubes on, on you know, how to do things around the house, how to fix, you know, I, I watch it, how to fix my garage door. <laughs> um, and people go to YouTube to, to watch how to learn how to trade, but it, what I found to be more helpful is have live training, you know, where you can ask questions directly to me in a live environment. And for the last three years, I've been hosting a live user training sessions for all users to join, where I drive home what I saw in the order flow the past week, you know, where you can ask questions to me, you know, maybe you got an issue with the software you want me to look at, and, you know, maybe I missed your email or I didn't reply, I'm there. Pretty much every week. I didn't have one two days ago because I'm on the road. But um, you know, I've been doing this for over three years. We actually have over 200 episodes um, over the last three years, and it's free for all users of our software to attend. And if you can't attend, you can watch the replays. So there are other, you know, you, I've seen other software where you could buy the software and then they charge you how to use it. I, I, I that boggles my mind, right? where someone sells you a software and says, oh, but you want to use it, you got to pay extra. No, you should know how to use it. So I also, I include that for free. I don't charge you extra on lessons on how to use the software, right? So what I discussed today on this training is really just a small sample of, of the kinds of analysis I talk about on a weekly basis in the live training sessions, right? But I go into much more detail about all aspects of trading from, you know, order flow to technical analysis, to fundamental analysis. I also talk about some of the different trading strategies I use and how to adapt them to changing market conditions and much more. So if you're serious about trading, then I highly recommend that you get started now. So you're gonna learn more about order flow in the weekly sessions than you probably ever thought possible. You definitely are gonna learn more you know, on, on one of the weekly sessions than you would, you know, watching 10 hours of video instructions on, on YouTube. Because a lot of times you don't even know what person's talking about until you're invested in it. Whereas, you know, in the live sessions, you can ask your questions. Now, I got a special bonus for those of you from Investors Expos is the order flow playbook, which is a course that I made. And there's an additional 10 order flow trade setups that you can learn in there. Normally, I sell this for $297. You're going to get it for free today. So what you're going to get is the order flows trader six, which is valued at $899. The trading course, which is valued at $297. The inner circle video series valued at $497. The weekly live group training session, you know, again, which some software companies charge over $200 a month for. It's ridiculous. And you get access to the order flow playbook for $297. But total value on all that is over $2,000. It's $2,190. You're only going to pay $749 today, right? To get all of that. And it's just a one time payment. You don't have to pay anything extra to me ever again in regards to the order flows trader software. Upgrades are free. Again, we've been providing the software since 2015. And when Ninja Trader had the big move from Ninja Trader 7 to Ninja Trader 8, everyone got the free upgrade. I know a lot of companies charged for that. Now, again, you have to pay your Ninja Trader fees and, and your data fees because you do need a real time data. You don't need level two, just level one, which is fine. Again, I get data from Ninja Trader brokerage and I get CME, CBOT, NYMEX, COMEX, 
and Urex, and I only pay like $60 a month for all three data fees. I do have level two, but that's just for me because I do like to look at the depth of market. But again, level one would cost you probably a little bit less. It probably cost you around $50 a month. So go to orderflows.com slash oft6.html. I put the links in the chat so that you have access to them. Okay. So what's going to do after you go to orderflows.com slash oft6.html, it takes you to this page. Now there's a video you can watch on there, um, you know, as well as explanations of all the tools that you're going to get. Again, I didn't talk about any of the tools today. I just talked about simple reading the order flow because once you start using the tools that are in the order flows trader software, your mind is going to be blown. So scroll down this page and just you get to this towards the bottom, you'll see the buy button here. Click here to buy now. You're going to get lifetime access to Orderflow Trader 6, as well as the access to the Orderflow Trading Course, the Inner Circle Video Series, access to the weekly live group trainings, as well as replays, and access to the Orderflow Playbook. Now, once you click here, it takes you to PayPal. PayPal processes your payment. I don't get your credit card. Obviously, I don't, I don't want it. I got enough stuff to deal with myself. So to get started, just go to orderflows.com slash off6.html. Now, as a special treat for those of you guys that have stuck around, I didn't mention this earlier, but I actually wrote a book on trading order flow. And it's 150 pages. You're not going to get an actual hardcover copy. You'll get uh, the digital download. But, you know, I started writing this after I left my job at J.P. Morgan in, in 2013. And, you know, this was sort of my, my contribution back to the trading community was this was this book. This was even before I, I, I didn't want to get into the software business. The reason I got into the software business was because I was trading order flow myself. And I know that the software... Software computer programs are designed to help you as a trader or help you with you know, other things. And basic order flow analysis, it was just that. It was basic. And I had my ways of analyzing the order flow, and I wanted the software to do that for me. That's how I ended up getting into the software because I found a program that understood you know, the order flow footprint chart. And I said, hey, can you put this, 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 this into the software to help me with my analysis? And then I started sharing my charts with other traders and traders like, hey, where'd you get this chart? So well, this is my own chart. This is what I look at in the order flow. I had a program specifically for me. And people are like, hey, can I can I get a copy of it? You know, and eventually, you know, word started spreading. That's how we built orderflows.com into what it is right now. So again, you know, to get started, simply go to orderflows.com slash off6.html. And I'll see you guys on the inside. So I hope everyone has a great rest of their week. And stay safe, everyone. Thanks for attending. Bye-bye.